guys welcome back to my channel so as you guys can see by the title I'm sure you're thinking that this is clickbait or something like that but I can assure you that it is not something crazy has happened this past week and so I thought that I would film it and tell you guys about it since it was really unexpected obviously it was not on purpose but it is kind of equally exciting so just to jump right into the story of it let's rewind a little over a week ago if you guys follow me on my Instagram, then you probably have seen that we have had an unusual amount of rain here. It has been a very, very rainy start to the summer, so we have had tons of thunderstorms and showers about every other day for the past probably almost month and a half, two months. It's been really wet, really rainy, and really humid. So of course, what happens whenever it's really rainy? The frogs and the toads start to come out. We have seen so many different frogs and toads out just on our property alone. After a good rain, you know, they typically come out because the bugs may be out and things like that so they're eating and they really love moist weather obviously so if you follow me on my Instagram then you probably saw that there is a toad that has been coming to my house he's been sitting on my back steps like he actually comes up the three steps in my backyard and recently whether it's been raining or not there is a light on our back porch and the bugs obviously love light that's what they're attracted to so he will actually climb the steps at our back door and he will sit there underneath the light and wait for the bugs to land it is crazy I have filmed him several times and I've also put him on my Instagram so if you guys follow me there you've probably seen that oh my goodness hi bud you trying to come in the house <laughs> so cute oh my gosh you just trying to come in You guys have probably saw that I've also been feeding him. Every time I see him, I'll put a couple crickets out there and let him have them. He is eating really good because there are tons of bugs on my back porch. And then of course I've also been feeding him crickets. So he's just been coming and visiting every few days for the past couple weeks. But again, with lots of rains and wet weather, this is to be expected. Now fast forward to about four days ago, I was outside with my dogs just for a few minutes. It's been really, really hot. And while it's been really rainy, the weather has also been really, really hot the past almost two weeks now. The air is thick, it's hard to breathe, it's really humid. So my dogs are only going outside for maybe 10 minutes at a time. I let them go to the bathroom and then I let them right back in. So because of this, I haven't been able to leave animals out in the backyard very long because it's just too hot. But if you guys have seen any of my routine videos with my dogs in the backyard, you know that I have a kitty pool out there that I use for Dixie whenever the weather is pretty. I'll fill it up with clean water, she'll jump in it, swim around, and things like that. But it basically just serves as a water pool for Dixie and Milo whenever it's hot outside. Well, because it's been too hot for the past few weeks to even let them out there at all, I have just been letting that pool get rained in and filled up with rainwater. And then the days that it's really hot, I haven't been going out there and cleaning it out since the dogs aren't out there anyway. So basically, this kiddie pool has just been sitting untouched. The dogs don't get in it, obviously. It's been growing algae like normal because it has been really hot and sunny and the sun on the water produces algae. And basically this pool has just been completely neglected because the dogs aren't going outside. If I were to even clean it out, even though it is super hot, it rains about every other day to every third day. So it's been filling up with rainwater and getting dirty. So it's seriously just been something that has not been a priority on our minds. So I go out there with my dogs about four days ago just to walk them. I think I was also picking some weeds for blue or something because I'm always out there picking weeds for blue. And while I'm out there, I just happen to look over and I glance at this highly neglected kiddie pool. And wouldn't you know it, I look in there and there are hundreds, hundreds of little tadpoles. I was completely in shock. I did film my reaction because I was like, oh my gosh. I actually didn't know if I was going to make a video on it or not, but I was like, better grab the camera anyway. And I have that footage for you guys. Guys, you are not going to believe what is happening right now. First of all, let me just disclaimer this whole situation by saying that the dogs do not drink out of this. They do not get in this. This is literally the pool that Dixie used to swim in but we do not leave the dogs outside anymore because it's just been too hot guys seriously look at all of the tadpoles in here so we've had a ton of frogs and toads come visit us recently here we do live in the country 
and it's been raining a ton so of course we've had tons and tons of frogs and toads come out they've been in our backyard i've been feeding them crickets it's just been like a whole thing if you guys follow me on instagram you've seen that there are hundreds of little bitty tadpoles in here and i just i can't believe it like i i don't even know i don't even know what to do there are literally so many tadpoles in here what am I gonna do with this? Like, obviously the dogs are never outside more than 10 minutes right now because it is so incredibly hot. They're completely indoors right now. It's just too hot for them to be out here. So we obviously haven't been using the pool. We haven't been cleaning it. Now there are tons of little tadpoles out here. And honestly, I don't really know what to do. I don't know, I don't know. What do you guys think I should do? Should I do nothing? But then there's gonna be like 100 little frogs in here. I mean, that sounds exciting in theory, but like, what am I going to do with all of these little frogs? But also, they're so cute. Like, look how tiny they are. They're obviously teeny tiny babies. I mean, technically, I know they're safe in here because nothing is gonna hurt them. I mean, nothing can get to them. We have a big fenced in yard, but like, this is insane. I just wanted to show you guys. They're so cute. There's so many of them. And I know that they're fine, obviously. I mean, tadpoles can thrive in all types of stagnant ponds, so that's fine. And technically, this is mostly rainwater. Do you guys want me to, like, show you their progress as they grow? Because, I mean, clearly, I'm not going to get rid of them. That's not an option. So I guess my only choice is to, like, take care of them or feed them. Oh, my God. Patrick is going to be like, what on earth? And I'm going to be like, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Look how little those are. Oh, my gosh. Wow, this is crazy. So obviously I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should feed them or if I should try and move them or what. So immediately, of course, I started doing some research. I also talked to some friends of mine. I also talked to Patrick. And I was just trying to figure out what I should do for these tadpoles. Obviously, I'm a very cautious person, so a lot of like red flags went up for me. I was like, number one, this pool isn't actually an ecosystem. Number two, they're very exposed to the sun. There's no lily pads or anything in there, so they can't really hide. Number three, I was like, what do they eat? I actually didn't realize that they mainly eat algae at this time, so like food-wise, they're absolutely fine in there. But without shade being exposed to the sunlight directly, what if it rains and then the pool overflows? Like I was having all of these really scary doubts in my mind. So of course I wanted to do some research and see what I needed to do to basically just keep these tadpoles safe. Obviously, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of them. Obviously, I didn't know at that very moment like what I was gonna do with 100 plus frogs. But I was like, we'll worry about that later because right now I just have to think about keeping them safe. Like that was obviously my first priority. I have decided that I'm going to do my best to take care of these tadpoles the best that I can. But of course, because there are so many of them, there's over a hundred. I have no idea how many. There could be more like 200. There's just a ton. I'm gonna do my best, but obviously there is an element of nature take its course. So I am gonna let nature take its course as far as they go. I'm not gonna be doing like total water changes or anything like that. However, I did decide to start feeding them, so I did research on that. I did decide to give them some shade, so I actually ended up putting a table over it because I'm really worried about birds, you know, bird's eye view. If a bird is flying over and they can see those tadpoles, or even once they're little frogs, I'm really afraid that birds will pick them off. That's a big fear of mine too. I just have so many fears, like those poor tadpoles, I have to protect them. But that's just like my main thought. I just keep thinking what can go wrong and how can I prevent that from happening? So I did decide obviously shade is really important while sunlight is also really important because not only does it help them grow, but it also helps the algae grow in there, which is what they mainly eat. I decided to put my patio table over the pool so at least birds can't get a bird's eye view of them. So hopefully that will give them some shade and protect them. As well as if it rains, I will be covering that up so that it doesn't overflow or anything like that. And then of course feeding them. So I did go and get some plants and some algae tablets, which is what I've been feeding them. And I also have put the plants in the pool, which I'm gonna show you guys because I filmed all of that for you as well. This is day two and a half, I guess. Almost day three of me checking on the little ones and seeing them. Oh, they're so cute. So I did buy those algae tablets and I threw a few in there and they look like they're already getting bigger. So far they're all doing really good. There's still hundreds of them in here and they're all doing really well. They definitely love the shade of this, basically a tree branch. I just broke a branch off one of my trees and put it in here for shade until I could get their plants, which are right here. 
as you guys can see I bought these beautiful aquatic plants which we're gonna be putting in there and they will be able to hide in there and eat off of them whatever and these are beta safe so they should be you know frog safe tadpole safe obviously I couldn't tell the pet store that's what I was using them for because of all the drama with that which I will tell you all about much later if you guys want to see the video on that let me know and then of course we have little blue here he is just soaking up some Sun another thing too I don't know if you guys can see I'll show you but I actually moved our glass table. This is actually our patio set table. I know it looks super janky. This is obviously not ideal, but we did put it directly over top of the pool for shade. Even though it's glass top, it's still providing a lot of shade as you can see. Also, I'm scared about the birds. That's something I've really been thinking about. The table is right on top, so I'm hoping that it can kind of distort the view and the birds won't mess with them. If I do see any birds getting close to this, that's obviously going to be something that is like really high priority on my list of keeping them safe because I'm super scared about it. But I think that they're going to really enjoy hiding in these plants and stuff. I think I'm about to put these in there actually. I'm going to leave the foam insert on there. Um, it's safe to do. It won't hurt betas. I did ask the pet store and they said that I could leave that on there as a weight just to hold it down in the tank that I told them I had. So we're going to put that in there and I think that they'll really like it put this one over here now if these plants do die or get eaten or anything I'm seriously not worried about it I bought them specifically for them so it's not a big deal if they munch on them or hide in them or get them dirty or anything it's fine I don't really care these plants were actually pretty expensive they were about five or six dollars a piece so I only got four but they're gonna grow they obviously are gonna do really well with the sunlight so I'm sure these will double in size if they don't die obviously tadpoles thrive in like dirty lakes and ponds and literal puddles like they can survive pretty awful conditions so I'm sure that this rainwater fill pool is totally fine for them but I am going to get an aerator the plants will also add some oxygen which is good and some shade for them so so yeah that's pretty much the first official update of the tap holes second time you guys have seen them I think also there's a really crazy story about the plants how it almost didn't happen because the pet store actually refused me service that is going to have to be a whole video in itself because it was insane. It was like the craziest thing I've ever been put through with a pet store. If you guys want to see that video, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But I'm probably going to be filming that as like a story time in itself because it was a ridiculous situation. But I will definitely tell you guys about that in the next video. So I did get the plants. They're in there now. They're hiding underneath the leaves. I've seen them nibbling on them. So that's going really well. All of the tadpoles look to be doing really good. I am considering buying an aerator like you would use for a minnow bucket. I'm about to sound really southern. Brace yourself. But basically there are these little boxes with like a tube and then a foam piece on the end. It basically works as an aerator to put oxygen in a minnow bucket. You would basically just put the aerator clip on the side and it would put air into the water to keep your minnows alive while you're fishing well I've been thinking about going to Walmart and buying one of those let me know in the comments down below if you guys think that would be a good idea I haven't gotten one yet but I've only had the tadpoles or known about the tadpoles for about four days so let me know if you think that would be a good idea I think I'm gonna do it anyway even though the live plants will be putting oxygen into the water so that's really good I've been thinking about buying an aerator too I saw some people online do that so that might be a good thing to do just to give them a little extra oxygen since it is so hot outside also just to answer any questions you you guys may have number one I have no idea exactly how many tadpoles there are in there I have no clue I love them though and I really hope that they all make it but obviously with nature taking its course the odds of all of them surviving is pretty slim that's just numbers in nature you know what I mean so I'm sure they aren't all gonna make it but I am gonna do the best that I can secondly do I plan on keeping any of the frogs once they reach adulthood Honestly, I have no intentions of doing that. I don't even know like if I should or if that's something that you know I should do. I have no idea. Also, I have no idea what kind of frogs or toads they may be. I have no clue what species they are. I know that it was a toad that I've seen at my door like every other night for the past couple weeks, but I have no idea if it's his babies. I have no clue. So again, that's something that I'm really not sure about. Also, I am trying to mess with them as little as possible. So while I am assisting them by giving them algae tablets for them to eat on just in case they need any extra supplements since they do eat constantly, as well as providing them shade with a table, safety from the birds as well as some live plants to put off oxygen in the water and things like that. I am doing what I can 
but I also am not disturbing them as much as possible. I'm not taking any tadpoles out. I have no intentions of moving them or taking them out of there. Honestly, how would I even do that? Like there's so many of them. I just like, I would be terrified that I would kill one or squish one, they're so small. And then maybe whenever they get legs and they get big enough, we can take them and release them somewhere. I have a few ideas of some places that I could release them safely. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Right now, I'm just watching them daily. I'm monitoring them. I'm feeding them about every other day, just a few algae tablets. And I'm just trying to protect them the best that I can with the resources that I have without disturbing them too much. But yeah, it's really exciting. I can't believe it. I'm a tadpole mama. I'm gonna have a lot of frogs. What am I gonna do with all those frogs? I'm excited to go on this journey with you guys and show you guys how they develop and different things that I notice with them and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested in any of those updates, let me know down below. If you guys enjoyed this video of my 100 plus baby frog slash tadpoles, feel free to subscribe down below and also click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the updates on their growth progress into becoming little frogs or toads. I don't actually know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video. Be kind. Bye.